G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and we've reached lesson 12, uh, a demonstration portion of my uh, Learn Dynamo series. Um, so if you've been watching previously, we're following on from dealing with solid geometry. So we're doing a tower generation in this example. Um, we're almost at the end of the series, so from here we really just have a conclusion to the series. So for those that have made it this far, um, thanks for watching. Uh, so previously we dealt with geometry, but now we're going to put it in practice. So we're keeping it Revit focused, so we're going to be looking at a tower form generated inside the Revit conceptual environment rather than something that's not practical. Uh, so we've looked at all sorts of geometry types, um, you've seen all these in previous videos probably. Um, so we've just finished looking at solids and how to bring them into Revit. Um, but now we're going to look at generating a basic tower form. And I'm not going to run through the entire script from start to finish uh, because it's a little bit too detailed and you'll probably see too many techniques you've probably learned already as you go, but I'll draw emphasis to various techniques that we've taught throughout the series and how they're being used in this example. Uh, so let's go straight to Dynamo. So I'm currently in a family environment. Um, for those that saw the last video, you may have noticed that I was working in a conceptual massing family environment. Uh, when my computer stops freezing, there we go. So the only thing that's actually in this family is a face um, at the bottom, and everything you see here is being generated by Dynamo. So what I've done with the script is I've started with uh, selecting a face um, as my input for the script. So I could change this to a different shaped face and the whole script would run differently. Um, from there, I'm taking its perimeter curves and that's in order to join them as a poly curve for the base of the overall uh, tower. From there, what I'm doing is I'm taking I'm taking that base later on and adding it to another list, but what I'm doing first is I'm translating it um, by a list. So here you can see I've used a range. So I'm going from X through to Y and I'm doing it in Z steps. And so what I'm basically generating here is a list of profiles to run a loft um, to generate the overall form of my building. So in this case, you can see that X is the first level of my building, um, Y is in this case, the maximum height, and Z is the number of iterations I wanna go through as I move up that loft. So you can see there that I'm basically using that to translate a list, and you can see that I'm basically pushing those poly curves up. So I'm keeping my first poly curve as the base of my building, but then from there I'm generating further poly curves as a copy of that. Uh, but what I'm doing then is taking the bounding box of each of those, making it a cube, and finding its centroid. And that's basically in order to find the center of where I want to rotate that geometry. So from there, I'm basically feeding a set of angles into those profiles. And you'll see that I'm, I'm feeding the degrees from earlier in my script. So I've basically got another range here. So the start of this, this range is X take X. And in this case, X is the rotations per iteration. And the reason why I'm taking it from itself is because I want it to be zero but I want to be able to make the maximum rotation as I go up the building, the number of iterations times the rotation angle. So that's how I achieve that range. So you can see I start at zero and I end up at six times the iteration of rotation. So if I change that to say 10 or eight, you can see the forms updating, but I'm also updating my list as well. So they're how I generate my lists to create the overall building form in principle. So from there, I've got a set of rotated profiles and I'm adding those to the front of my ground floor. And the reason why I'm not starting from zero is because I want my first floor to be my podium and I don't want that to twist. I want that to be a logical start to my loft. So my first stage of my loft will be straight. And you'll see there that I come in at an unequal level in my list. So I'm flattening that list to get all the poly curves of my building and I'm generating a solid uh, for my loft. Um, what I'm doing with that solid is from the last tutorial, you may recall that you can override geometry by geometry color. So I'm overriding that to be a transparent uh, blue, uh, greeny blue color in this case. And I'm just turning off the preview for the actual solid. This is it, if I preview that, that's the form. Okay. Um, I might just stop previewing these curves as well. So you can see the, the form defining curves in this case. So I'll just preview these. So these are the, these are the curves that are defining the loft of the tower in principle. So you can see them in action there. So you can see they're independent to the floors because we're generating our floors using a different method. So I'll just turn that preview off. Okay, so what we've done now is we've added another slider and this is my floor to floor height or my maximum, um, sorry, my, my minimum floor to floor height I can allow. So what we need to do with this is we're taking 
the overall distance from our base level to our max from our max level. So we're doing max minus base. You can see that there. There's that base. That's our max. And from there, we're dividing that by the maximum floor to floor height to find out the number of times we can achieve that floor to floor height. Um, but because we're above uh, the number in this case, we need to use the math floor, uh, which I think I showed in lesson two, um, which is basically a forced round down to the nearest integer. And that's so we know the maximum number of floor to floors we can achieve. We're using a bit of a complicated formula here, but essentially we're taking the height of the building. In this case, that being the first level height. So we're starting there. Um, we're then taking our floor and our floor to floor. So you might recall from, I think, lesson five, I was defining variables um, by typing them in. So I've got a few variables in play here, such as floor and floor to floor and height. And I might actually release this script um, just as a reference uh, for people if they want to actually try this script out at home as well, because it's quite a complex script. Um, I might do a live demo of the script, maybe just not in the series itself. Uh, but you can see I'm going from the height plus the floor, uh, plus the floor to floor as well. So the floor in this case is the maximum number of times I can achieve the floor to floor. Uh, so that's how I know my total height to the top of my range of floors. Um, so it won't necessarily be above the tower's height itself. And from there, I'm just taking the, the, the floor plus one as my number of floors to space from there. Because what I'm doing with that range is feeding that into another translation node. Um, and I'm taking a plane in this case. Um, so I'm taking the origin plane and then I'm translating that by this range of values up from there. So you can see I'm taking, taking it from the first level, uh, which is the top of my podium. And then I'm going up to the, the maximum number of floor to floors that I can achieve by using this range. From there, I'm basically adding the, the base plane to my building because I want my ground floor to also uh, be calculated as a floor. And then I'm using a node called geometry intersects, which will generate any geometry that results from the intersection of these elements. So I'm intersecting my tower form with all these planes in this case. And my output is a list of surfaces, which are basically my floors. Um, I've got one node here just for preview sake, which adds the boundary to my surfaces. So I'll just unfreeze that, turn on the preview. And now you can more clearly see the floors. Um, from there, I'm just taking the surface areas so you can see there I'm working at level one because I'm working at this level of the list in order to generate my areas as a, as a flattened list. I'm then converting them because they give me as output as square millimeters. So I'm putting them into square meters and then I'm just totaling them and then also just watching the sub list. So the great thing about this script um, is I can actually run it in automatic mode because I'm really just working with geometry. So it's quite fast. So what I can do is just move my tower over to the side here in Dynamo. I can actually I can actually experiment with my with my form now. So I can say what height is my first level at? And you'll see it's all dynamically updating as well. I can also change the maximum height of my building. And I can say how many twists do I want? So how resolute is the twist on my building? You can see there it's getting more iterations and as a result it's rotating more as well because I can say that my rotation angle is increasing. So you can see my tower is twisting as I increase that. And then I can also change my floor to floor as well. So I can say my floor to floor is getting larger. So obviously I'm fitting less floors in my building. So you can really see the power of Dynamo um, for just really high level area calculations for very basic tower forms in here, because what's happening on the end is these are all updating as we go. And there are more intelligent ways to package this into a user interface. Uh, but in principle, this is how it works. Um, what I might do is I'll, I'll add a Google Drive link uh, to this video, um, which will contain a link to the script if you want to try it out. Um, but in principle, that's, I guess, a, an example of all these on display. What I can do last is if I go to manual mode, I can actually turn this into a piece of geometry. So I'll take my output geometry back here, my solid by loft, and I don't think I need to flatten it in this case. Actually, I'll take my floor plates, so I will flatten them. Um, in this case, I'm just going to push this list in here and it's going to be imported into my family environment. So when I run this, I should expect they will be baked into my environment. And there you go. You can see that those imports are in there and they should be able to be used for a mass floor in a Revit project as well. Um, you could also do the same for the building form as well. So just an example of a workflow from start to finish of how you can use all these techniques together. 
So hopefully that helps sort of put it all into context. Um, and hopefully you'll join me on the next one. Um, so if you need any help, always check out the primer and the forums. They're great references, um, especially now that you're probably learning some more advanced te techniques and maybe making some of your own scripts. So the next lesson will be just looking at where to go from here. So just some pointers and advice on where I recommend you direct your learning and also your self-education from this point as well um, with what you've learned so far. So um, if you've got any queries or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Um, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. And if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. Um, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.